In the first days of the beginning of the war our division was surrounded. We deployed a medical unit in the forest and cars were constantly bringing the wounded, and huge queues were accumulating to the operating table. I remember my first wounded man. I found him on the front line, in a clearing. He was lying on the ground a young guy from Moscow. He had a shrapnel wound in his stomach, and he was in great pain. I rushed to him, began to bandage him, but I was crying, sobbing, and I couldn't calm down. The soldiers who were near me said to me, Sis, why are you crying so much? Don't cry. There will be many more of us. You can't cry for all of us. That day we sent twenty cars of wounded from the front line. And I didn't get my Muscovite to the infirmary. He died on the way. And when I went to take the wounded from the front, we were attacked by German planes. The car was driving just along the field, and the airplanes were firing machine guns from shaving flight. I remember our cars were burning, the rye was on fire, wounded soldiers were crawling out of it. Their clothes were on fire too, screaming, yelling, moaning. Our division was melting down fast. The fighting didn't stop. The Germans would break through here and there. They started to go around us. Then we got out of the encirclement. Some lieutenant colonel led us out. The wounded died on the way. There was no time to bury them. Sometimes we'd take the moss off the top, put it down and cover it with moss. That's the whole grave. Once we came across a wild apple tree on a farm. The soldiers pounced on it. They ate too much. And dysentery broke out. Many died. When we came out of the encirclement, there weren't many of us left in the group. We settled down in a clearing. Some fell asleep right away. Some just sat there, changing their shoes. No guard was posted. Suddenly we heard the roar of engines up on the mountain. Before we knew it, they were shouting at us, Surrender. We saw Germans with machine guns standing there. They searched us, took away our weapons. They took my purse with my medallions. When wounded men died, we took their medallions, marked on the map where they were buried. The Germans took everything. I had two cubes in my buttonholes a military felcher. I was well dressed. The Germans immediately thought I was a commissar. They brought me to Navel, Gates, Ditches, Stench. The Germans dumped the corpses directly into the ditches and covered them with earth. They took forty men from our column. I was included in that number, obviously as a commissar. Because in this team were mostly political workers and commanders. They brought us to the ditch. They shot us slowly. They'd take two or three of us and make us dance. They beat us with whips. Then they'd shoot. The dead would fall down and the Germans would laugh. There was a commander in front of me in a line. Four more behind. The rest were all lying down. A young German was walking beside me all the time, looking at me from head to toe and saying, Pity, she was beautiful. And suddenly an open-topped car drove into the gate. There was a German officer in it, apparently the head of the camp. Other officers came out of the car, and the German interpreter recognized me. I recognized him too. One day he was among our wounded who had just come in from the front line. He was wounded in the arm, moaned all night, and I gave him an injection. I sat beside him until morning, calming him down. He was in a Red Army uniform then. Who he really was... I don't know. He knew Russian perfectly. And you couldn't tell the difference between him and a Russian. He ran up to me, pulled me out of the death row by the hand. He began to say something hastily to the chief. He did not believe him, waved his glove away, turned away. Then he pulled out my medallion. Fortunately, it had a note on it, von Feldscher. That's how I escaped a bullet in the back of my head in that ditch. They took me away, threw me in the cellar. Beaten. A few days later they took me away. They took me in freight cars. And fighters from the camp's sanitary unit took a medical saw, carried it with them into the wagon and sawed the boards in the wall of the wagon. 
That's how we escaped. We jumped into this hole and immediately ran over the roadside shrubbery. Fortunately, the train was not moving fast. The Germans soon noticed and opened fire. But they fired bursting bullets, which, hitting the bushes, immediately burst and did no harm to any of us. Day and night I ran through the forest. Finally exhausted, I came to a village. And the woman whose house I entered said, In these clothes, the first policeman will grab you. And she started pulling off my army clothes. She threw them all in the stove and burned them. She gave me a long shirt with flowers on it, and that's what I wore as a refugee. That's how I got to the familiar places where I worked as a nurse before the war. They knew me here. A peasant woman took me in and I began to treat the sick. Especially often I had to deliver babies. There were a lot of births then, in the 41st year. If I helped people, they would give me food. That's how I lived. Then the partisans appeared in our area, and I went into the forest. I could no longer look at police faces and pretend. 